Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Alamo Heights High School. We are here for what is another season of Trojan Hoops here on Vibe Live. Jack Farrell here joining you for another season. Happy to be back. Very much excited to see the new team. Got a lot of fresh faces and a lot of familiar faces out here. Several returning lettermen for this Trojan team. Got three returning starters out there as well. Getting ready to go here in about four minutes. It looks like we're going to have something of an early start here. We are completely fine with that. Might as well get on the road a little bit sooner if you can, right? But looking back at the 2020-2021 season, our first full season of Trojan basketball here on Vibe for you, the varsity team finished 20-6, 20-0 uh, in district. And of course, with a 14-0 record, you already know they won the 17-5A district championship. It was their second season in a row advancing past uh, the area round. We got into the quarterfinals, lost both times uh, so far. So the goal going into this season, I'm sure, is to push even further into the postseason. But that's going to be tough with uh, having to replace a lot of these guys. Six all-district players, uh, three on the first and second teams each for Anderson last year. Gross Keel was selected the District Defensive Player of the Year, but Jack Francis, returning senior on this team now, hard to believe. Jack was, uh, well, not that he's selected, but hard to believe he's already a senior, been starting since he was a sophomore here. He was selected the all Centex Defensive Player of the Year, and of course, Coach Pittsford selected the District 17 5A Coach of the Year. So this is a team with some hardware already coming in. They are proven. And this is a good basketball team. Now, looking over on the other side of the court, of course, is the Mules of Alamo Heights. Last year, the Mules went 15 and 11, one and five in district, looking at their roster. Now, they return a lot of players from last season, but they're, uh, this Alamo Heights roster is stacked with juniors right now. They went 15 and 11 last uh, year. They opened their seasons together, Anderson and Alamo Heights did. That one was at Anderson almost a year to the day. That was November 13th. Today's the 12th. And in that one, Alamo Heights gave Anderson uh, what would be a taste of their own medicine going through the season. They were smothered in that game. The final score there was 57-250. Now, going ahead back to the Anderson roster, Looks like starting for them tonight will be Mitchell Whitlow, Jack Francis, and Mike Wagner, along with Nate Langley, and I believe Bennett Blackerby is getting the start tonight. Uh, four of those guys returning from the team last season. I'm not sure. I remember at the beginning of the season, uh, Mitch Whitlow was one of uh, was definitely on the roster, but I felt like we didn't get to see much of him last season. He'll be out there, but. Uh, in the starting lineup, you have four returning players, and you've got a lot of... Let's go! Let's go Trojans! <laughs> go Trojans indeed. Getting ready now. Both teams headed to the uh, the huddles here. Heights with the white uniforms. <laughs> These <laughs> Alamo Heights uniforms look a, a lot like Anderson's uh, home jerseys. Anderson, of course, rocking the away blues. Alamo Heights wearing white. Some nice, <laughs> some nice shorts there. Got the blue and... Uh, the gold trim with the blue accent. You got heights across the chest. Uh, blue numbers with uh, orange, or not orange, yellow uh, highlighting. Anderson got the blue shorts with the Kentucky style checkered down the shorts. But now here we go. Coach Pittsford and company getting ready for another season of Trojan basketball. Looking to mirror some of the success they had last season. It'll be tough. This team that was already small has gotten even smaller. Not a lot of height, but Anderson was able to overcome that pretty much all year last season until they ran into that brick wall of Hendrickson at that Weiss gym. But now here we go. It looks like we're ready to send it down to the court. I believe we'll get your team introductions as well as the national anthem. We're going to tune up that crowd mic. And when we are uh, ready to come back, we'll have the start of the game for you. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the first broadcast of the season. You're listening to Trojan Hoops on Vibe Live.
Trojans, Austin Anderson. Six foot junior guard, number one, Mitchell Whitlow. Six two senior guard, number five, Jack Francis. Six foot junior guard, number 10, Bennett Blackerby. 5'11", senior guard, number 11, Mike Wagner. 6'3", senior forward, number 24, Nate Langley. The rest of the Trojans, coached by Daniel Pittsburgh, assisted by Eric Swanson, Jose Chavez, Michael Stratton, and Robert Lynch. Now, let's bring out your mules. Six foot, junior guard, number 33, Chico Stretch. Six five, junior post, number 40, Gage Wright. Six foot, senior guard, number 11, Mitchell Novavis. Six foot senior guard number 20, John Marco. Six one senior guard number 30, Leo Salman, and the rest of your Alpha Hunt Mules. Coached by Andrew Brewer, assisted by her for and Ben Ross. Well, if they are going to enter with the Alan Parsons project, the same music that the, you know, 90s Bulls used, you better, uh, you better come to play. And come to play, they have. The teams have taken the court. Bennett Blackerby already with a number change in the season. Going from 23 to 20 on the rosters to 10 in the game tonight. That's going to take me a little while to get used to. Some new numbers out on the court. Nate Langley rocking 13 last year has taken Jaden Austin's number, 24. But looks like with our one-man band and our janky tripod, we're going to be able to zoom out and get this thing going. So here we go. First tip of the season. It's the Anderson Trojans visiting the Alamo Heights Mules. Going to get the camera all set up and ready to go. And it looks like we are going to be able to keep it moving. So the jump ball in the middle will be Gage Wright and Nate Langley. Wright wins the tip. So to start things off, it will be the Alamo Heights Mules and... Here they come, now at the top on the right wing is Mitchell Navarez, comes back up top, that's Marco. Francis in defense. There's right over on the right side, little handoff there. This Trojan defense looks good in this first possession. They look ready, look amped up. There's Whitlow in defense on the wing. Francis trying to jump that pass and break it up. He's on the big man right. Now coming on the screen is Marco. Marco back up top to Strash. Now Strash up top working on Langley. That's the thing about this Anderson team is it's hard to hunt mismatches when everyone is six foot or under, but they get an open-ish three opportunity. And Strash fell down, and he got the whistle. Blackerby might have gotten a bit of the hand, but that's a soft whistle to start the season off. And it looks like Alamo Heights will be on the board first with this free throw. It's Chico Strash. Strash to the line, shooting three. Hits the first. And with 7.15 to go, looks like they will be updating points for us on the board today, which is very handy. Both free throws good now. Looking to make it a perfect three for three to get his season going and get the scoring going. Anderson still yet to touch the basketball 45 seconds into the contest. Alma Heights so far taking a lot of advantage of the lack of, uh, of shot clock. So here's Francis getting trapped up in the backcourt. Wagner looking to make his way across. He's able to. But he's shut down. They get it into Whitlow, and Whitlow's fouled. Officials trying to get rid of some of that shippiness early. 
And they get Marco, both teams, with a foul. And it'll be Whitlow to inbound. They go into the backcourt with Wagner. Wagner making his way across court. Into Whitlow to Blackerby. Francis has the ball on the block and makes a post move, turn spins, and he's blocked. That shot knocked away by Gabe Wright. Excuse me, Gage Wright. And here come the Mules. Cross court pass goes through the hands of John Marco. And it'll go back to Anderson. So in the early going, just a minute gone by, Anderson trails three to nothing. This is just their second offensive possession. Wagner gets it into Blackerby. Open in the corner, decides to take a dribble. Kills it up top. Going to go a skip pass to Whitlow, and that's picked off. Coming is Chico Strash. He's going down the other way. Hop Euro step, lays it up and in over Wagner. So all Chico so far, 5-0. Whitlow, more stifling defense from Alamo Heights, and this is their brand of basketball. These two teams pretty similar. Alamo Heights does have the advantage of a little bit more height as there's Whitlow trailing to the corner. He's open for three. That's no good. Francis knocks it out. He picks up the rebound, and the Trojans will have another shot. And it's a Francis three. Jack Francis knocking down his second shot of the season. It's the first basket for the Trojans. It's a triple. And Jack jumping that passing lane. He thought it went off Marco. Wanted to steal that possession back, but it'll stay here. Good job to knock it out of bounds nonetheless. Now the inbound pass coming in from Salmon. Gets it into right. Now Salmon with Whitlow in coverage. He kicks it to the corner. It's Strash. He attacks Langley. Langley doing a good job of forcing him back out. Strash staying up top, working on Langley. They kick it to the corner. Now going to try and post, and Jack's there to take it away. Now here come the Trojans. Jack hits him with a crossover. Moving into the front court, he has Langley fading to the corner. Nate's going to attack baseline, and he was pushed out of bounds. The official on the baseline is uh, making the call there. It's still 5-3. That's the second team foul going against Alamo Heights here in the first quarter. Of course, you know how it is. Seven fouls to get to the bonus, ten fouls to the double bonus at the high school and college levels. Well, here's Wagner, kicks it to Blackerby in the corner. Get ready to see a lot more on-ball opportunities for, uh, for Bennett Blackerby uh, in this season. Made a big leap over the summer into his junior season. Takes a dribble into the short corner is Langley. Now into the corner, Whitlow. He's going to get the blow by. Kick back outside to Francis. Francis, ooh, had one more pass to Blackerby. Decides to go inside to Whitlow. Whitlow hits the lay-in, and we've got a tie game to five. Five minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Strash working on Wagner into the corner. Salmon. Blackerby with some good defense. He got a little too handsy there. And that's going to be a push going against Blackerby. So it'll be our first substitution of the game. And here comes the sixth man for this season. It's going to be Campbell Duncan, just a sophomore. You saw some of him play. or some, He and some other young guys get into games throughout last season. Jackson Gill, number four, uh, going to be another sophomore on this varsity roster. And Duncan making some moves already at the six-man roll. But here's Navarez in the corner. Wagner there to take it away, and it's a fast break opportunity. The Trojans have numbers. Wagner's just going to take it himself. Strash not playing that aggressive uh, that aggressive defense in transition. The Trojans probably would have had the bucket anyway. They had two uh, players trailing Wagner. So they have their first lead of the season. It's 7-5. to five. Doing a good job shutting down this Alamo Heights defense. Only one basket for them so far. And here's another one up top for Wright. Wright can't connect. Whitlow unable to get to it. And the attempted throw off of him can't get anybody, but Strash throws it up, and he hits the ground hard. Both of the fouls on Strash seem to be... He's, he's getting some contact. He's just doing a good job of selling it. Just hitting the ground hard. Brings Strash to the line. 7-5, to five, Anderson with an early lead. Strash misses his free throw. He's now 3-4 for four on the game. Chico with all five of the Mules points so far. Just a junior. And this is going to be a lane violation going against Wright. He missed the shot anyhow. So Trojans going the other way. It'll be Francis bringing it up on the inbound from Whitlow. But they'll have Wagner because the safety is there's two men back. Now here comes Jack. He's got that fade into the corner, that play I love so much from last season. Willow there on the rebound on the backside, gets the lay. So a second chance opportunity for the new face in the starting lineup. 
Trojans pushing that lead a little bit further. It's now 9-5. to five. Here's Wright getting things going. Salmon with his dribble up top. He has Strash. They get it back into Wright. Chilling there at the top of the key over to Salmon. It's Under Armour uniforms for Alamo Heights. Nike uniforms for Anderson as Navarez has whistled it. Over the travel, picked up his pivot foot. Just a hair too early. Should have the whole season slate of games for you on Vipe uh, when it comes to this Anderson basketball season, and I should be here for as many of those games as I am physically able. As here comes Wagner, kicking it into the corner to Duncan. Duncan goes back up top to Whitlow, and Whitlow's tripped. So I have a side out as we are swimming through this game. Eight-minute quarters. Already halfway through this first. This here's Wagner inbounding it. Looks for Whitlow back outside to Mike. Mike going to take a dribble baseline, and he's stuck there, but he gets it back outside to Whitlow. Get Francis driving baseline. He's going to kick it inside to a cutting Duncan, and that is a good basketball play from the sophomore. That's a gorgeous cut, and if he's going to play like that, make smart plays like that, he's going to be able to stay on the court for a lot this season. And already, you're just picking up where we left off last season. It's 11-5 Anderson in our first uh, timeout of the game. Timeout is going to be called by Alamo Heights. Each team rocking three fouls so far. Strash with all the points for Alamo Heights. Anderson, a little bit more balanced. You've got four of your starters, or uh, excuse me, four players in uh, the scoring column, three of your starters. Mitch Whitlow leading everybody, actually, with four. Jack Francis hit the only three of the game uh, for either squad so far. Strash did have those free, uh, three free throws on the foul on the three. Wagner with the bucket as, along with Campbell Duncan to force that timeout. Anderson not showing the press that Alamo Heights is as the inbound goes from Salmon to Strash. And here come the mules of the Wagner picking up Strash. And Duncan pick, picking up Salmon. And Wagner's there to jump the pass. Mules getting lazy as Wagner goes up and under. Can't get the layup. Duncan knocks it out of bounds and it will go the other way. Mikey tried to get a little too fancy on that one. Now here come the Mules. Driving baseline on Wagner is Strash. He tries to just get rid of it to Salmon. It's a successful bailout attempt. And now inside is number 34, Teal Sabom, who was fouled underneath. Got a little too physical. And checking in, number 13, Ben Bazarian. They get it into Strash, and it's knocked away by Francis. It'll stay here. Ben Bazarian, senior. Saw him get some run on the JV squad last year. And get up some shots. Now into inbounded is number 22, Flynn Cooper, who's into the game. Here's Leo Salmon back up top for Strash. Something about this Alamo Heights team, they only have one player with a number below 20. That's as Salmon misses the three, that's that's not really anything, but I've just never seen that. Mostly kids try to go for those short numbers as Teal Sabon able to knock down the jump shot off the bench. So he is fouled, and he comes in and knocks down a shot. So good productive minutes for Teal so far as he halts the Anderson scoring run. It's 11 to seven now. There's Bazarian with it at the top of the key. Francis with it on the right wing. He's able to get it into Langley, who's going to try and go to work in the post. The spin, and he is knocked away. Teal Sabom making his mark in the game early. As here's a fast break. They don't have numbers. And able to get it up anyway and lay it in is Flynn Cooper. Now just a two-point game. Heights right back in it. It's Francis dribbling to the right, and he is called, or uh, Alma Heights called for a blocking foul. Actually, they're going to get Francis for the, what's the call here? Maybe it's. I think it's on either Langley or Duncan. It looks like they're going to get Campbell Duncan. I think it was might have been an illegal screen, but now Halima Heights with a chance to tie or take the lead with three. It's here Strash. Looks like Strash might try and pull that trigger for three, but he loses the ball. Looked like he might pull up there. Fires it over to the corner. That's Aiden Shaw. Excuse me, that's Beck Tippett, number 23. That is Aiden Shaw. Gets it back to Sabom. Sabom into the corner. 
trapped there by Francis. Now into the lane. That's Flynn Cooper again. Flynn trying to work on Langley. High arcing shot gets it to go. It's not bad defense. Just got the basket to fall. And we have a tie game. So a couple of scoring runs. And we are even with, uh, with one minute remaining here in the first quarter. Francis, Duncan into the corner. Or excuse me, Wagner into the corner. That's Francis. Wagner up top. Crosses over. Pulls it back into Langley in the post. Finds Francis outside on the wing. He's going to fire three. Looked good all the way, but just off the rim. Langley there on the board. Langley back outside to Wagner. There's a minute left now in the corner. Wagner into Langley. Takes one dribble. Back outside. It's Bazarian wide open for three. He takes it. Rims out. Francis on the board. It's knocked away by Strash. And they're going to send it the other way. Francis had it knocked out of his hands, and they're saying it's off Francis. So with 45 seconds to go, Alamo Heights with the ball back. Anderson already with five fouls in the game. As I imagine, Alamo Heights going to try and hold for the final shot here. Is it Strash? Hasn't taken a seat yet in the game. He has five of their 11. Now back outside, that's Beck Tippett. Tippett up to Sabom. Sabom looking for Strash, but instead they'll just fire it over to Tippett once again. He was working the ball around. Still 20 seconds left. Francis got a hand on it, so no backcourt. Here's Strash. He kicks it over. That's Shaw, Bazarian in defense. Swings it over. Almost got away from both of them. Now attacking the paint is Cooper. Cooper throws it up, misses. Francis is there on the board. And this is going to be a, well, I think they should have like half a second. We'll see what the call is. They may just send it to the quarter, but I think this is going to be a foul going against Alamo Heights to close out the first quarter. But you've got a tie game through one. Yep, they're going to call a foul. Yep, you heard that. Going to go on number 24, Aiden Shaw, which will go ahead and send us to the end of the first quarter. I'd like to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast, both uh, sponsors of Anderson Basketball. I want to thank Howry Breen and Herman as well as Enco Tech. Holding on from last year. To thank those folks for sponsoring Anderson Basketball. And I'd like to thank the folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors for sponsoring our broadcasts. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in-store or online at academy.com. You can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. So back into the game. We've got quarter number two coming underway. This basketball game sure do move fast as it's a Hail Mary pass to Francis. Lays it up and he can't get it to go. Oh, he had it. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. It gave him .4 seconds, and that was a perfect throw catch, and Jack just couldn't get it to go. So now we are into the second quarter, and now we're going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. We've got more Trojan hoops for you on Vibe Live coming up in just a moment. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Back in for the real quarter number two now. Anderson with a chance to take the lead there at the end, just coming up short. And instead... We head to quarter number two, all tied up. So Trojans will certainly take that foul. That's just the first going against number 24, Aiden Shaw. But the fourth team foul overall for the Mules. So good chance that both teams will be seeing the bonus here as the Trojans are already up to five team fouls. Official's been pretty, I don't know, trying to find the right word. They are blowing the whistle. Uh, you know, more more than some officials might. They're playing it pretty close to the chest here in the early going. Not letting either team get away with too much. As they'll have Whitlow inbounding to Francis. It'll be starters in to start quarter number two for Anderson. Francis works around the Whitlow pseudo screen. As that's Francis screaming to the corner. He's got an open look. Knocks it down. 
And that is that killer play. Woo, love it so much. As it gets you a, a pretty good look at a corner uh, three every time, which is the best shot in, in basketball from an analytics and efficiency standpoint. It's a shot underneath, no good. Blackaby gets the board. Now here comes Wagner in the break. He dishes it off to Whitlow. Maybe made one too many passes as Whitlow can't get it to go. Pitchford, Pittsford wants the foul, won't get it. As coming into the front court is Cooper stumbling, and Francis able to knock it away and get the steal. Looked like that'll count as a block and a rebound for Jack as Cooper's pestering him in the backcourt. Here comes Francis all the way, coast to coast, kicks to the corner, one more pass up top, it's Whitlow. No good on the three, Langley going up to get the boards, lays it up, lays it in. Six man extraordinaire last season. Also got some starts when the football team hadn't quite uh, all joined the team. Remember how late football season went last year with COVID. As here's a three-point shot for Cooper. That hit off the stanchion. That should be out of bounds, and it is. But yeah, remember for, for half that season, they didn't have guys like Gross Keel. Of course, I mean, <laughs> district defensive player of the year. He's a pretty important piece of the team. Didn't have him for a lot of the season. Anderson, fortunately, uh, as basketball season starts the week after the regular season of football, as Blackerby wasn't looking for that one, didn't make the right cut. Anderson should be full strength pretty much from the from the onset as Wagner knocked it out, and he's going to say it went off Cooper. And that's the call on the floor. We've got some subs. Let's get who's in and who's out. Nate Langley's going to check out, going to check in as Derek Armour. And after, the, after the Langley bucket, Anderson leads it 16 to 11. Here comes Francis working on Cooper. Jack, ooh, the little in and out move. He got caught in the air. Whitlow had an open three, decided to pull up against it. Wagner going to try the tray now. This one's short. Whitlow tried to get the rebound, but Wright was there to pull it down. Alamo Heights the other way. It's Chico Strash. Trojans by five. Blackerby in good defense. He's already got two fouls. Now in making the cut, Francis goes straight up with it, but knocking down the basket. His first of the game is Beck Tippett. Anderson the other way. Here's Francis going to go in early into the three, and that's the third triple of the game for Jack Francis. I believe he's three for four on tries from downtown in this one. And they've got the lead 19-13. Get the scoreboard updated as soon as we can. Strash gets that one into right. Now here's Strash back outside. Trying to get it in, driving baseline. That was Tippett. Tippett has the shot from the corner. That's no good. Cooper trying to sell the foul a little bit. Anderson comes away with it. Five minutes to go in the half. Here's Jack coming up the right side of the court, looking at a cutting Whitlow. That's gone. But now Blackerby, open corner three. This one's got to be a foul. No good. No foul. Look like he might hop into his landing space, but good job avoiding it as Strash is rejected by Whitlow. Now cross court, Salmon. Now inside, he's got the smaller man, Whitlow, on him. And the jump hook is no good. Right short armed it. And Anderson the other way, playing some good defense. Here's Whitlow. No one challenging him in the open court. And Blackerby for the corner three. He's a little jazzed up, a little strong on all these shots. But here's a loose ball. Blackerby fighting for it, gets it. And this is going to be a foul going against Alamo Heights. Perhaps a lucky break as Blackerby got caught uh, between a rock and a hard place there. <laughs> They're going to have to throw it and turn it over or just take a backcourt violation. So somehow Anderson gets the ball with a foul, which evens up team fouls. Five apiece, Anderson 19, Mules 13. As first order of business, let's get Jack a new tripod after this game. <laughs> this is hardly serviceable. But here's Francis. He'll make it through the game, right? Francis crosses over to the right, gets baseline, looking for a cutting player. He was looking for Blackerby, but coming in to cut it off was Armour, and Bazarian going to try and three, and that one rattles in. Benny Buckets from the corner. And driving in, Cooper flips one up and in. So some quick points back to back, and Flynn Cooper with a team high six points now for Alamo Heights. 22-15. Francis over to Blackerby. Blackerby going to try again. This one is a brick, and that one hit off the shot clock. Or the game clock, I suppose. And that'll be out of bounds. So 22-15, halfway through here this second quarter. 
All right. Flynn Cooper has got a pretty good roll on a lot of his shots and good touch on his shooting stroke. Gets it into Chico Strash, who scored the first five for Alamo Heights. Hasn't scored since. Blackerby in defense. And there's Whitlow to knock it away. It's a two-on-one break. He's going to take it anyway. Lays it up, lays it in. Soft defense from Strash again on the other end. So now Mitch Whitlow up to six. He trails only Jack Francis. Those three triples at nine. So here's Strash. Blackerby in defense. Playing some good, uh, some good defense. He's there. He has had the ball in his hands the most. He's their biggest on-ball threat. And Blackerby with two fouls. Got him early. Has done a good job not fouling since then. As here's a screen. Comes from Sabom. Now into the corner. That's Cooper. Another shot for him. And Flynn Cooper's feeling it right now. Trojan lead now cut down to six. It's 24-18. Here's Blackerby. Works around the screen. Gets to the free throw line into Ben Bazarian. Putting it on the floor for the first time. He swings it across to Jack Francis. Francis into the corner, or more. Now back outside, he's got Blackerby. It's a dangerous pass there going that far across court with it. Now inside, they've got Armore finding Blackerby. Blackerby tried to pull up from the elbow. Navarez stripped it from him. Strash up ahead. That's Marco. Marco now into the corner. Cooper again. Can he knock down another? He can. So he's the only guy that's really doing anything from the Alamo Heights side of things. Got a slow him down and pretty much good to go so far. He's got a uh, 12 of their 21. As Francis steps out of bounds, Cooper in defense. This looks like we're going to get a mass sub for Anderson. Both teams still with five team fouls. Francis getting his first rest of the game. And it looks like this is actually going to be a timeout called by Anderson. We'll see if it's full or a half. All right, just a 30-second timeout to stop the bleeding a little bit. Flint Cooper has been the one keeping the mules in this game. I'll make sure we got the scoreboard all updated. Anderson with a 24. There we go. It's a 21 lead. Got it all right now. Trojans holding on to this lead here. Still very early in the game, of course. Not quite to halftime. Right, they are going to need to slow down Flynn Cooper, who has just sat down on the bench. And he looks tired, so. Let's go, Wonders! Let's go, Wonders! Here comes Strash for Alamo Heights. And then Navarez on the right side. Bazarian playing some pretty good defense to force him back up to the top of the key. Now Navarez trying to work on him. Strash back up top. Oh, that's Salmon. Now into the corner. They're trying to get it into 34 Teal Sabom underneath. But here's Strash. And they're going to get Strash for a travel. Jackson Gill just checked into the game. In on the defense. Gill out there along with Bazarian, Langley, Wagner, and Duncan. Campbell Duncan. Not the last... Not the first time I've ever seen a productive player named Duncan wear the number 21. As Duncan sets the screen. Wagner working his way around it. He's going to get all the way to the basket, and he's going to challenge Sabom. A little strong on that one. Is here Strash coming the other way. They can tie or take the lead. They fire into the corner. That's a bad pass. And incomplete, out of bounds. Strash feeling himself a little bit early. Now starting to get a little, uh, what's the word? A little careless with the ball. He's had a few turnovers here. As Francis checking back in, and it looks like they're going to keep Cooper in on Francis. Looks like that's the matchup. They feel the most strongly about. They get it into Jack. And there Cooper is, ready to blanket him. A minute and a half left here in the half. Francis works around the Duncan screen. Langley, pump fake. Wagner, a lot of motion for Anderson. There's Cooper, screen coming for Langley. Good job to fight over it. He finds Wagner. Wagner got the blow by. Shot off the glass is good. Mike Wagner. Little kiss. So here's Cooper. Might be time for a heat check. 
Anderson pushes their lead back a little bit further. It's now 26 to 21. Here's Strash trying to work down the clock as there's Sabom. Open corner three now for Salman. Salman can't hit it. Navarez, they're going to get Francis on a whistle. Looks like Navarez is just losing it out of bounds. Jack probably did hit him a little bit, but lucky call. As we'll see how many that is on Jack as Gill's going to check out. That's just the first on Francis. Neither team making their way into the bonus despite... Uh, Having quite a bit of team fouls there in the first quarter. Anderson is uh, is over the limit, though. Now Alamo Heights will be shooting one and one if they get fouled again. As up top is Salmon. Looks like they're holding for the final shot, though. 40 seconds. There's Cooper. They get it in. And walking with it is Gage Wright. A couple times he's had Whitlow posted up. And Whitlow has been good tonight. He's had six points in his uh, season debut. He's made some good cuts, some good defensive plays. But, I mean... That should be a no-brainer. Mitch Whitlow is not that big. Gage Wright, one of the biggest guys on the court so far tonight. Probably the biggest guy in the game, to be honest. But Anderson with a chance as Francis loses it. Out of bounds. Francis still with nine points coming on uh, three three-point baskets. He's now with 24 seconds left. It's an NBA possession for Alamo Heights to end the half. Is up top. It's right. Looking to get the play going as they find Strash. Wagner in defense. Looking for Navarez, but instead they'll go back up top. Now over to number 30, Leo Salmon. Back up top to Strash. Five seconds now. Navarez out to Strash. Strash going to pull for three. Can't get it to go. Francis on the board, and that's how the half ends. Anderson leads it. They win second quarter. Alamo Heights scored 10 points in the frame. Anderson with 15, and they'll take a 26 to 21 lead to halftime. So pretty good start for Anderson as they dropped their home or not? Well, yes, home opener and season opener last season to Alamo Heights. We mentioned that in pregame. So they're doing a much better job as that game they had to do a little come from behind victory situation. As it looks like now, JV team. And probably be playing it after. Don't see that a whole lot. But it looks like how we're uh, going to be doing it tonight. That uh, We will not be staying for that one. After we get this varsity game, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But we should be able to see a lot of this JV action as they usually play before the varsity squad. I believe they had to change it because I think Alamo Heights is playing a playoff game tonight. We've got plenty of playoff football for you on Vipe and on Flow Sports tonight. If you want to check out some of your favorite teams, I'm sure we'll be able to hook you up on Vipe or Flow Sports. But for now, we've got nine minutes on the scoreboard for halftime. I want to take you through some of these Anderson players as well as some of these Alamo Heights players. Of course, we talked about it. Uh, Flynn Cooper <laughs> with 12, Chico Strash with five, and then Beck Tippett and Teal Sabon both have two. So scoring coming from a lot of one place for Alamo Heights. Anderson, on the other hand, Jack Francis with a team high of nine. Then you've got a few other guys contributing to that. Mitch Whitlow, six points for him in his season debut. A good start. Jack shooting the ball well as well. We said those nine points. Mike Wagner with four. He had a nice little shot off the glass from the mid-range, a little pull-up. Campbell Duncan and Nate Langley both have two. And, of course, Ben Bazarian knocking down, I believe it was a, a corner tray to get on the board and preserve that Trojan lead a little bit. But now, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, but not before we thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast, Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's finally starting to get cold. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's starting to get a little chilly out there. Love it. it means it's basketball weather. Much prefer to be indoors during the fall. Watch some uh, court sports. But, uh, but Academy Sports and Outdoors... If you want a selection of fleece, no one does fleece quite like Academy. They carry all kinds of cool styles from today's hottest brands. Check out styles from brands like Columbia, Crocs, Levi, Carhartt, and the North Face. So don't wait. Get ready for winter weather at Academy Sports and Outdoors. With that, going to go ahead and take another break, and we will be back once the third quarter is getting ready to go. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to our first broadcast of the season. Got Trojan hoops for you. 
and we will all season long. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, back in, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe. VYPE.com. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, back in, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Gonna come back in now. 
Got two minutes until we get started for the second half. Want to go ahead and show you the scoreboard there. Anderson leading in this one tonight. It's 26 to 21 in uh, after two frames. Anderson definitely showing off some of that rust, although I think Alamo Heights, well, a, a team that's very much on the level of, a, of, a, of an Anderson school. Anderson probably would be picked to win this game by many, but you never know, opening night on the road, a team like Alamo Heights, they play a similar style of basketball. Anderson, I would say, uh, focusing much more on on movement, not just around the uh, perimeter. I feel like Alamo Heights is really, maybe it's this Anderson defense really taking them out of what they want to do, but it seems like they've really just been dancing around on the perimeter a lot. Going to make it a lot harder for them to get into the teeth of the defense, which the team like Anderson that doesn't have a big interior presence, you might think the teams would try to drive at them instead of hang around, shoot more threes. But Anderson, you can see, well, there's a little bit more off, uh, I guess on ball. There's, last season, there were a lot of guys that never really put the ball on the floor once they got it. Anderson showing that they've got a lot of guys that are willing to put the ball on the floor, uh, a lot more than they might have been last season. Bennett Blackerby even, you saw him put the ball on the on the, on the floor quite a bit. He was a, mostly a spot-up shooter last season, and he would kind of try and dribble drive every now and then, but not a lot usually came of it, but he's been aggressive here, a little bit too aggressive. It's led him to, he picked up two early fouls, which definitely took him out of, out of rhythm a little bit in the early stages of the game, but been much better since. He just needs to settle in and find that jump shot a little bit and he'll be off to the races. So here we go, half number two underway. Officially, it's Chico Strash going to be starting things off for Alamo Heights with the ball. They get it inside to right, right back outside to Navarez. Wagner in defense. He killed his dribble. Now up top, there's Strash now over his right. Strash Langley picks him up, crosses over, gets to that free throw line. Jay, that's way off. Francis there knocks down the rebound, picks it up, and he'll go the other way with it. It's Cooper picking him up as he has a all game. Francis spins the other way. Good screen from Whitlow to get him off of him. Wagner is going to take it step back and kick it over to Blackerby who's going to fire from downtown. This one's short and rebound goes along to Cooper. He's going to push the other way. Wagner was ready to take the charge if it was there. Way long on the three from Navarez. Langley there to pick it up. Finds his point guard and away they go. <laughs> Nate Langley wanted to make sure he wouldn't cut across but that's a great pass to Francis and that's going to be a blocking foul. I thought and he called that the other way, and he took a charge from the side. If they called that on Jack. I might have lost my mind a little bit, but it's going to go against Navarez. Instead, it'll be Wagner. Wagner Francis, he's got Cooper behind him already, and he killed his dribble there at the elbow. He's going to have to pull back and reset. Blackerby going to take it into the teeth of the defense, and Cooper, yeah, Cooper was set, sat underneath that one for about five minutes. Good take from the most contributive mule of the night so far. It's Cooper trying to get it inside to right. He's working his way around the perimeter. There's Strash. Strash loses it. Blackerby knocks it into the hands of Salman. As Francis didn't put his head up, if he did, that's an easy steal. Step back three from Cooper. Didn't have his feet under him, so he pulls back out. Here's Wright going at Langley, and that's an up and in foul. Gage Wright gets the end one bucket his first basket of the night. He'll head to the line for one. Anderson now with a three-point lead. As in both halves, Alamo Heights strikes first. First foul of the game going on Langley. As here's the free throw. Up and good. So three points now for Gage Wright. Leads back down to just two as here's Whitlow pushing. Blackerby. Gets it into the lane, loses it. Strash gambled on it. Now Wagner going to just take it and reset. There's Blackerby getting into, into the corner to Whitlow. Now back outside and they'll restart. Here's Wagner. Reset. Clock. Here's Langley. Wagner all the way into the teeth of the defense. And that is going to be a 
foul underneath. They're going to get Strash. Looks like they might have had another charge, but that's going to be a foul and two shots. Mike Wagner. Anderson, this might be their first free throws of the game, of the season. I think they are. It's Francis, no, excuse me, Wagner. Short on the first one. Mouth gets ahead of the brain sometimes when you're talking. As there's Wagner, he goes one for two after a little bit of drama. Five points for Mike. Now into the corner, that's Navarez. They're going to try and go to right once again. That last time he went at Langley, it worked pretty well, and he gets that too. So in the second half, Gage Wright's starting to get going. He's got five points in this quarter. Blackerby going to dribble into a pull-up trade, and he knocks it down. Bennett Blackerby says, I will give you that. I'll raise you this. Six minutes left here in the quarter. Cooper gets it into right. Now up top to Navarez. Navarez looking for Strash. Now into the corner. Salmon going to try. His shot no good. Langley going up to grab that one. Wagner now pushing pace. Anderson has four on two. Wagner into the lane. He's just going to take the floater and knock it in. Mike Wagner. Mike's up to seven. As they are not giving me time to update this scoreboard as Navarez steps out of bounds, and that's Trojan basketball. Okay. If you had 32 to 26, you'd be right. Trojans take that turnover. Six minutes to go here in the quarter. Well, closer to five. Wagner gets it across. A couple seconds to spare. He gets it over to Whitlow. Now going downhill is Wagner. Cross court, Blackerby. Another chance for him in the corner. This one an air ball. Whitlow nearly had it. And that's going to be a foul going against Strash. Whitlow had a, a chance to, to grab a rebound with one hand <laughs> as he hooked Whitlow. <laughs> My cable is causing some trouble for the custodial staff here at Alamo Heights. My bad. So this one's knocked out of bounds by Strash. It'll stay here. This is the first, I believe, what I was told, this is the first game and Alamo Heights' new gym. And I tell you, it does look new, feels new. We've got the track surrounding it, able to get us this nice view. Nice that the track is closed right now. As Wagner still trying to get it in, fires it up top. He's got Blackerby, and not a moment to spare. Here's Jack, Cooper on him. Jack been held scoreless here in half number two so far. Dribbles to his left, gonna pull up for three. Can't do it again as Whitlow gets that one, throws it up, misses Langley there on the offensive glass. Langley gonna try it. Langley's shot is good. Nate Langley has been eating on the offensive glass. Only with four points, but doing that dirty work down there. Now into the corner, Navarre is going to try. Hits it over Whitlow. Need a little more aggression on that closeout. Otherwise, Anderson playing some pretty rock-solid defense. That is a big shot from Navarre as this game was starting to inch away from Alamo Heights now. Just 34 to 29, Anderson will get the ball out of the timeout, just a 30-second timeout for them. So we'll go ahead and keep it here. Anderson, two team fouls in the quarter, Alamo Heights with three. Since that big barrage there in the second quarter, Flynn Cooper has yet to score. It's still 12 for him. Gage Wright and Mitchell Navarez are leading the Mules in second half score. And Gage Wright, all five of his points coming in this third quarter. And Mitch Navarez just knocked down a three to force that timeout. That's his only basket of the night. But now 34-29. Gets it into Francis. No press this time from Alamo Heights, but Cooper will pick up Francis once he crosses half court. So he'll dribble hand off to Wagner. Gets Francis fading to the corner. He's going to attack the basket, kick across. And this one, nice job by Solomon to read what Francis was trying to do and take that away. As here comes Navarez. And that's got to be a carry, but no call. As coming in to intercept it is Whitlow. Wagner, here he comes. Beck tipping in defense on him. Wagner gets around him, firing to the corner. It's Langley. He's going to dribble inside. Now back outside to Wagner. He's going to take a triple. That's no good. Langley there on the glass, and it's knocked away and out of bounds. And it's going to go Alamo Heights' way. These 50 balls have gone Alamo all night. But Anderson still with the lead. Alamo Heights still with more team fouls. But neither team's shooting a lot of free throws despite the quantity of fouls that we've had. So here's Cooper. 
Cooper didn't start. He had 12 points off the bench. Now back up top, it's Navarez. There's Salman. Salman looking. He finds his man in the corner, fading for the three is Tippett. His shot's good. In the era of three-point shooting basketball, <laughs> games are never over. Alamo Heights are right back to a two-point game. Cross court to Francis. He's wide open, going to take it. Can't make it. Langley going up to get it high point. This one's knocked out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off Langley again. Nate Langley has gone to work, and they are just giving him nothing underneath. As here comes Cooper, sprinting into the front court. Hands it off to Navarez. Wagner in defense. Wagner knocks it away. But we will reset here. Back up top is Beck Tippett. Knocked down a three a moment ago. As here's Cooper. Working on Wagner. As he lost it. Wagner knocks it away and out of bounds. He'll stay here. As all of these balls that Anderson knocks out of bounds, I don't think they've gotten a single one. Go their way as a lot of them are very close. Sometimes it feels like that when you're in an opposing gym. Does it seem like you're being fought against by a whole lot more than just the opposing team? As Salman trying to get it in, as they do, into the corner. Now back outside to him. Cooper running to the other side, and they've got him. Duncan fell asleep on the defense, but that's an air ball into the waiting hands of Sabom, and he is blocked. Alamo Heights fans want the foul. Francis lost it, waited for it to come out of bounds, because that one's knocked out of bounds by Salman. Jack been a little loose with the handle at times today, as they're going to send in Bazarian for Duncan. Duncan can't fall asleep on those skip pass closeouts, as here's Francis. Cooper going to be defending him in the backcourt. Here's Jack crossing over. Wagner into Francis in the corner. Jack going to think about it. Step back. Can't get this one. He's cooled off from downtown. As there's Whitlow, and that's going to be off of Mitchell. So we're at a deadlock here. Haven't had much scoring since it got to 34-32. But Cooper sprinting into the front court again to try and tie things. There's Navarez. Francis almost got a hand on that one. There's Bazarian in defense on Salman. So they're looking for Sabom. As they got Navarez cutting. He's out of control, and Jack is there to take it away. And that's a foul on Cooper, and Cooper's getting... Cooper's overstepping his boundaries a little bit here. His pesky defense on Francis has, has, has really slowed down Jack tonight, but he's made a few plays that are a little on that line. Here's Gill. Whitlow going to check out. Jackson Gill, a sophomore, still yet to score in this one, but it's his second stint off the bench today. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. So for Anderson, it's Bazarian and Gill, along with uh, the three starters, Langley, Francis, and Wagner. Picking up Wagner is Beck Tippett. Wagner crossing over, trying to get it across. He does. It's Francis. Cooper in defense on him. Bazarian coming around the screen, just has to go up and grab it. Wagner trying to get into the teeth of the defense, does, lays it up, and can't get it just a little bit too much on that one. But that'll send Wagner to the line. He's the... I believe he's hit one of two as Mike Wagner. If he hits both of these, he'll tie Francis with nine and the team lead. Francis one for two from the line so far. I believe they've only shot two. So here's his first. So this one's true. So that, get, that gets rid of a chance for Alamo Heights to take the lead. They can still tie with a three, depending on the status of this free throw. Is Derek Armore going to check back in? Langley going to get a break. So Mike with eight. Let's see if he can make it nine. Fundamentally sound basketball from the point guard. Love to see that. It's 36-32. Navarez. That's Tippett. Tippett looking for the big man underneath. And Gill looking ahead of the play. Didn't give himself a chance to grab and fling that pass to the leaking Wagner. So a missed opportunity there for the Trojans. Got to take advantage of those in a game like this. But so far, they're still holding on to the lead with a minute and a half to go. Now coming off the screen, they're going to try and get it into Salmon, and they do. Wagner knocking that one away from Sabom. Now into the corner, that's Cooper. Cooper looking cross court. Gill ready to intercept it if it's there. Cooper gets it back outside to Strash. And Chico going to fire it into the corner to Salmon. 
there at the top of the wing. Going to bring it back to the top of the key. Looking into the corner, he has Strash. Bazarian in defense. He spins out of it. Wagner got a hand in there, and that's just a good bucket from Chico Strash. That was uh, not good shot selection. It was great defense, but he still knocked it down. And that's, that's the nature of it sometimes. But here comes Anderson. Just a minute to go as Francis said he stepped out of bounds. That'll be a turnover the other way. As now with another chance to tie or take the lead is Alamo Heights. As they have not taken advantage of just as many opportunities as Anderson in this one. As Strash looking baseline, Cooper going to get the handoff. Now back up top, it's Navarez. 40 seconds to go. Save on with it outside. He's going to put it on the ground, fire it into the corner, and taking Armour out of the play with that screen. That shot's no good, but Armour there to grab it and take it away. Sabom. And the uh, Sabom was there, but the position arrow is going to go Anderson's way, and it looks like they're going to come in with the starters here to end this quarter. As Whitlow is back in with Blackerby and Langley, and Gil, Armour, and Bazarian going to hit the pine for now. 30 seconds left. Trojans can hold for the final shot if they want to. They've got a two-point lead. As the pesky defense from John Marco is still scoreless in the game as a starter. Wagner. Back to Francis. Cooper and defense on him. Blackerby. With 15 to go. That's a lazy pass. Almost stolen by Cooper and stolen by Cooper. Jack knocked it away. Langley is there. Blackerby has it. Eight seconds left. And this is going to be a jump ball. And it'll stay Alamo Heights. That looked like it might have been a foul going against the Mules. But it'll stay here with the jump ball. And Cooper, after a nice defensive stop from Anderson underneath, will have another chance to inbound it. Because Blackerby is going to check out after that pass for Bazarian as they've got him on Navarez. Some good defense from Bazarian on the inbound play. As there's Cooper, going to take the contested shot over Langley. That's going to be no good off the stanchion. Francis comes down with the rebound, and looked like they were about to whistle Sabom for another foul, but looks like they are going to give them the end of the quarter before that happens. So we have the fourth quarter coming up here in just a minute. I'd like to thank our sponsor on tonight's broadcast, Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Also want to thank our sponsors of Anderson Basketball here tonight, Howie Breen and Herman, as well as Enco Tech. Both these teams getting ready to come out. Should have a fourth quarter, a good fourth quarter coming ahead. Just a two-point game entering the finer, final frame of basketball. We had so few <laughs> close games it seemed like last season. As so far, Anderson just struggling to, uh, to find points there in that quarter. Just 10 points for them in that one. They are led by their seniors, two guys that have been there their third year on this varsity team, Jack Francis and Mike Wagner, both with nine. As it'll be Whitlow to inbound. And here we go for quarter number four. Whitlow getting it into Wagner. It'll be Strash covering him. Uh, is Wagner able to get it across? He lost Strash a little bit, and that one's into Whitlow. Looking for Francis. They're going to get it to him on the wing. Jack taking the screen from Whitlow, crossing over, working his way back into the middle of the lane. And this one's taken away and stolen by Aiden Shaw. Jack having a little bit trouble taking care of the ball here tonight. Now into the corner. That's Aiden Shaw. They've got... Ooh, it's knocked away by Langley. He had right one-on-one. -on -one. Langley into Wagner. Back to Langley. Going up with it. Can't get the roll, gets his own board. Gonna go back up with it, it's knocked away and he's called, he'll go to the line for two. Langley getting bailed out finally. He's been a beast on this offensive glass. Is that foul's gonna go against Marco. 
And I believe Anderson now will be in the bonus moving forward. That's the sixth team foul against the Mules. As here's Langley. Ball don't lie. So the big fella, by this team standards, I should say, hits the first. Hits both. That one looked a whole lot better. A real pretty looking free throw from Nate Langley. Not known for his jumper. But a good touch on that free throw as here's Blackerby in the corner, not to be deterred. As there's Wright in the post working on Langley. He moved him off the block. And that's going to be a foul against Langley. Not sure if Nate agrees with that. But it'll be Gage right to the line, who's one for one from the charity stripe. It's the second foul going against Langley, the third team foul against the Trojans. Seven minutes to go here in the final quarter. Happy to be back. Happy to have another season of Trojan basketball for you to broadcast as the first free throw is up and good. I believe this is our first uh, basketball game of the season on Vipe uh, for any team. As football season still dominating our focus over here, but this time we'll have some basketball for you and we will move into the season with another game on Tuesday at Round Rock as the Mules go one for two from the line there. Right hits one. As here's Whitlow. He kills his dribble up top. He finds Francis. Gamble on the steal. Jack's just going to go up with it. That's an easy two. Easiest two Jack will see all night. Unless he gets a fast break bucket. So it's 40 now for Anderson. 35 for Alamo Heights. Strash trying to get around Wagner. That's just good defense. And Mike knocks that out of bounds. Mike not to be trifled with in that one-on-one -on -one defense. He's not going to get burnt. But he will put the clamps on you. Because they need someone to, to get this ball in, no? Yep. Here's Leo Salmon, another senior on this Alamo Heights team, trying to get the ball in. And they do, just up top to Strash. Blackerby defending him. Strash going to attack Blackerby. Turns, spins, throws it up. And he's bailed out again on an acrobatic leap into the air. Chico Strash, the officials have been doing a pretty good job calling fouls equally tonight. But these on these drives from Strash, he just goes in with no control, flings it up. And the way he's flying through the air, it looks like he gets hit. But usually officials don't like to reward a player when they go up out of control like that. But he hits the first free throw. And Strash is one of those guys, he's just a tough shot maker. Tough shot taker, tough shot maker. So he gets them both. Nine points now for Chico. Six minutes to go as Whitlow catches a pass, and he's been doing that all night. Marco has been trying to steal away those entry passes, and that's the first time he's been whistled. But that will send Mitch Whitlow to the line, and he's a guy that we've seen knock down some shots from the outside. And he has that capability. He hasn't done it tonight, but we know he is not just a kind of beneath the basket kind of offensive player. He can stroke it if he needs to. So maybe he can be a reliable source at the free throw line as the front end of the one and one is absolutely pure. So Trojan shooting the rest of the way. Anderson still got two fouls to give with six minutes. Up and good. So eight points for Mitch Whitlow. To start off tonight, Mitchell playing a pretty good game is in his starting role for the Trojans tonight as there's right up top. They get it over to Salmon. Wagner defending him. Wagner has been excellent defensively tonight, his one-on-one -on -one defense especially, but his rotations have been pretty good too as they get it into Cooper who has yet to score in this half. As Cooper working his way, kicks it to Strash in the corner. Chico's just going to pull. Duncan, lucky he wasn't whistled. He did get into Strash's landing area. His feet were right there with Chico's feet. And in the modern way this game is played, you're going to see that called sometimes. As Wagner working off the screen, Francis crossing over. Back outside to Mike. Screen comes from Whitlow. And that's going to be a carry called against Wagner. Some good defense outside from the Mules. They've been, uh, they've been just as scrappy on the defensive end as Anderson tonight. I said in the pregame and in the halftime discussion a little bit, both of these teams play a very similar brand of basketball. Kind of try to do the same things. And that's what happens when you just don't really have size at all. Neither of these teams with anybody 
above like 6'5", as Strash takes Langley to the basket and scores. Strash now into uh, double figures. So it's back to a three-point game. Anderson just has to play smart the rest of the way because they have a three-point lead with five minutes to go. Need to execute and play their brand of basketball as Langley sets the screen, gets the ball outside. He's going to take a dribble inside. He's going to fire cross-court to Whitlow a little too high and back out to Wagner, and they'll reset. Under five minutes now. Back inside to Langley. Going to put it on the ground. Go up and under with it. Can't get it to go. Whitlow on the board. Whitlow with the putback. My goodness. This Anderson team forcing the timeout now. This team might not uh, might not want to stop for dinner on the way back the way they've been eating on the offensive glass tonight. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was really bad. That was that was dumb. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, they they really have been great on the offensive glass. But I promise I won't say something that stupid again, lest I be fired. Now with 30 seconds left on the timeout, going to take you through is Anderson scoring is Jack. Got a uh, basket there earlier to put him into double figures, the first Trojan to do so. Mitchell Whitlow right there behind him. He's got 10 in his first game of the, the, the first game of the season here for both these, these teams. Mike Wagner with nine. And Nate Langley with six. These are your leading scorers for Anderson. Blackerby and Bazarian both have three. Campbell Duncan with a pair himself. That'll make 44 for Anderson. Alamo Heights just with 39. The Trojans with a five-point lead. Mules do have the ball. So we'll keep it, uh, keep it over here as the Mules try to inbound it. Under five to go. Anderson looking to spoil the christening of this new court. Alamo Heights with possession here. Strash calling his play out as they get it inside to Marco, and that's going to be an and one basket off the foul from Whitlow. That's John Marco's first points of the game. She pushes it to 41, and now Anderson with a chance to, uh, or well, Alamo Heights with a chance to cut it to two. Trojans have made some mistakes at some pretty inopportune times. Here's Marco's free throw. That's a knuckleballer, no good. Cooper tried to knock it in, and Alamo Heights wants a foul, but he just kind of flailed in. <laughs> so he gets it out to Wagner. They got to get it across. Because no one's really actually keeping track of the eight seconds. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, they get it into Langley. That was nearly five seconds on Wagner. So here's Nate working around, gets it back to Mike. Screen comes. He's trying to get past Strash as this one's into Duncan. Duncan somehow came away with it. He's just going to try and fire it into Langley. Wagner knocks it free. He kicks it to the corner. Duncan going to try and triple. This one's no good on the roll. Langley knocks it away into the hands of Duncan. Gets his own miss, lays it up. No good. Langley there. Whitlow there. And we see Alamo Heights has it. It's a jump ball underneath. That'll go the other way. But Alamo Heights already had it. So that's a victory for the Trojans. Alamo Heights should have had that ball anyway. But Anderson at least gets them to burn the possession arrow. And it'll now go the other way if we have another jump ball. There's four minutes to go. Trojans have a three-point lead. Had a big opportunity to, to extend that lead a couple times. Campbell Duncan flying in, making some of those plays. And as this season goes along, you're going to hope that he starts to knock some of those looks down. Just a sophomore. And Coach Pittsford told me before the game that he will likely have a six-man type role throughout the season. Of course, everybody, it's their job to lose in sports. As there's Strash Wagner defending him well as he gets Marco outside. Two points for him. Strash with it now. 11 for him. They get it in. This one nearly turned over as Cooper gets it, floats it up. No good. And knocked away. Langley has it. Langley pushing. He gets Duncan into Francis. Francis is going to go to the basket, lays it up. Can't get it to go. This one's knocked out of bounds. It's got to be Trojan ball, and it is. Francis trying to draw some contact. Couldn't get it to go. It'll be Sabom out of the game. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Engage right into the game. We've got three and a half to go. Trojans have a three-point lead. Campbell Duncan going to check out. As you can see, the upside in a player like him hasn't put it all together yet, but when he does, it's going to be a tough thing to stop as they get it to Blackerby outside, now into Wagner in the corner. Trojans 
resetting, trying to get the best shot they can. Every possession matters. They get to, to Blackerby. He's got an open tray. He can't hit it. And Cooper there on the rebound. And they're going to call Langley on the foul. Not sure if Nate really did anything there. Going to say he got him with the hook. That's the last foul to give for Anderson. So both teams going to be shooting going forward. Trojans still with a three-point lead with the same amount of minutes to go. Here we go. Strash has possession for the Mules. Get it up top. Here's Wright. Wright looking. Finds Marco. Marco coming off the screen. Francis picking him up. He turns, spins, gets to the basket, lays it in. Good move by John Marco for just his second basket of the game. It's a one-point game. Now under three. Anderson struggling offensively as it gets it into Francis. As this team is a smothering group defensively as Whitlow doing a good job of just staying in bounds. As they look for Wagner, they get it to him. Screen comes from Whitlow. Gets himself switched on to Marco. Two and a half left. Gets it to Langley. Langley pulls back. He's going to put it on the floor. He needs to get rid of it here. He's able to find Francis, and Francis is going to pull it, pull it away. As we got a timeout for Anderson. That's good. Able to get it back in and just reset the possession. There's two minutes and 18 seconds left. As every second counting here as we move forward, it's a full time out for Anderson. Going to go ahead and keep it here. Anderson, uh, for what they're doing on the defensive end, there's really not much you can ask for, but Alamo Heights kind of playing them the same way. And Anderson really not getting any easy looks inside. And some of those threes that they were able to knock down early in the game simply have not been falling here in the second half. Francis was three for four in that first half, and he has yet to hit another three in the game. Dumbazarian, I believe, his uh, three was in the first half. But if the Trojans can start to knock down some of those triples, it's going to be a going to be tough for Alamo Heights to come back, but really what Anderson just needs to do is, and this is obvious, is just get the best look every time. When you don't have a shot clock, you're, you should never be in a rush, especially in a tight game with the lead. Because if Anderson can work the ball around, waste some time, and generate a wide open triple and knock that down, it's a four point game with like two and a half to go here. There's 2.15. If Anderson can, can, can run some clock and hit a three, they're in good position, but of course you still just need to play your game and if the, if the shot is for Langley down there on the block, then that'll be Nate's shot to knock down. But we'll see what the play is out of the timeout, or if we just said more of the same, more motion, more moving the ball around. As the ball is kind of stagnated here late into the game as Whitlow gets it off the inbound. He gets it back to Francis, and they're going to get it back to Wagner to start the play. Blackerby, they get it into Langley. They're going to run it through the big man in the post. Puts it on the ground. Going to go inside to Whitlow. Whitlow puts it on the ground. Oh, he's got an open look. They fell asleep on Whitlow, and he's got the basket. Everyone just got tired of him using that pivot foot, and he's got the basket. It's 46-43. Uh, yeah, I believe once they updated it, it'll be 46-43 with a minute to go, with a minute 50 to go. As here driving in is Strash. Strash bumps off Francis, and he gets it to go. Actually, that's Marco. As Marco's really come alive, six points in the fourth quarter. As scoreboard is a little mixed up here, but it's a one-point game once again. I believe it's 46 to 45. I could be wrong though, because it's all wrong on the uh, board. As Nate Langley gets it, he can't get it to go. How did that not drop? That was all but down for Nate Langley. And now Alamo Heights with a minute to go with a chance to take the lead here. It's a one possession, or excuse me, a one-point game. 110 left on the clock and counting. Here's Strash. Gets it back outside to Cooper. Cooper driving in on Blackerby. He bumps him off. Pulls and hits. Not sure. Anderson getting the tough end of the whistle. Did they call the offensive foul? I thought it was a push off on him. No, this is they, they wouldn't call it that late. It's got to be a, a clock issue. As they get Cooper the basket, it looked to me like he got a big shove on Blackerby to move him out of the way. But now with 59 seconds, Alamo Heights has their first lead in a long time. Trojans, probably with a couple opportunities to get this done. 
They may hold for the final shot as they get it to Blackerby. Blackerby in the lane. It's a little pull-up for him. Little footer's good. Bennett Blackerby gets the shot, and the Trojans have the lead. Bennett Blackerby, five points, and two of the biggest right there. Trojans have the lead back. They only burn about eight seconds a game clock. But now 30 seconds of timeout for Alamo Heights. Late in the game, they've really started to swallow that whistle. Only one team foul in the last several minutes here. Both teams getting ready to come out of the timeout. Anderson, it's all about defense. We'll see what they do here if they're just okay with taking it in the half court or if they want to apply some pressure in the front court. I might just be content to let that half court defense ride and that is what they're doing. Don't want something to happen where they get just an open open look in the, in the, in the half court after some broken play on the screen, but it looks like they will pick up Strash there at half court. They've got Campbell Duncan in and Bennett Blackerby out for this defensive possession. Here's Strash spinning on Wagner. Wagner in defense. They've got Cooper bodying up Langley. Langley falls down, kicking a wide open three in the corner for Marco. It's no good. That hit the backboard. Trojan ball, 30 seconds to go. They get Blackerby back in for offense. Because they got a good look. That was a... That was a lucky break for Anderson. I'll take you through the play in just a moment uh, once we have an opportunity, if, uh, if it still matters in a minute. As they get it into Jack, just luckily, as Francis now into the open court all alone, as they're going to call a trailing foul. That stops action, but Anderson will head to the line. Now on that play, what happened is they got Cooper posting up Langley. Once he tried to body Langley, Langley tried, I don't know if he fell, got tripped, or trying to draw a charge or if Cooper just hit him that hard. But Langley went down, which forced Duncan to have to crash on the man lest you give up a wide open layup. He kicked it to, uh, but if you give up a wide open layup, you know, playing four on five is never good. They got it. They got Duncan crashing in to, uh, to contest the layup, which led to a wide open three from John Marco, who has been excellent in this fourth quarter. He scored six points in just the last few minutes. So we have a full timeout on the court. Anderson will be shooting free throws. I think it's Wagner. No, is it Fran? I think it's Francis. So Jack Francis will be stepping to the line with a one-point lead, by the way, in the bonus. Not the double bonus, so it's still a one-and-one one for Jack Francis. This game is not nearly over. For a team that played very, very few close games once they got into the regular season, this is a whole lot more fun <laughs> for me. It's hard to keep a game interesting when Anderson is leading 50 to 18, but when you've got 48, 47 down to the wire, whew, I'll take that any day of the week. Although there's some of those kids down there on the Anderson bench are thinking, I would love to be up 40 right now. Get rid of some of that stress. But here we go. Under 30 to play, 26.7. By the way, that last foul, the fourth going against Chico Strash, who's their leading ball handler for much of this game. They've got Jack to the line, Langley the only one in there. If Nate <laughs> if, if Nate can, can somehow get an offensive rebound on this, I will lose my mind. But here we go, Francis the front end of the one and one. Rims out, it's rebounded by Cooper. Now they've got a chance for Strash. Here we go, 20 seconds. Could hold for the final shot. Imagine Anderson will still get another look regardless. Strash, they got the cutting Cooper, it's knocked away! Cooper gets it back! Now back outside, Strash open for the three! No good, rebound, nobody! Battered around, Willow has it! Seven seconds to go, Anderson Trojans headed back to the line. Woo! Alamo Heights just cannot convert on some of these open looks and some of these lucky bounces. And that's gonna be that's gonna be the story of the game if Anderson is able to get out of here. That foul going against Flynn Cooper, team high 14 tonight, has now headed to the line Mitch Whitlow. Is Alamo Heights gonna try and ice this young man? He's two for two from the line so far. He's got a team high 12 points. 
I want to make sure we got all our map right. Yep, 48 points for Anderson. Mitchell Whitlow leads the way with 12, and he's got an opportunity to add a couple more onto it here. Francis missing the front end of the one and one, and by the way, that's the last single uh, bonus foul for Alamo Heights. That was their ninth team foul, so once they get to 10, Anderson will be shooting two. There is only seven and a half seconds left. So I imagine regardless of what happens here, it's going to be a, an attempt at the buzzer for Alamo Heights. As we may have overtime if Whitlow hits two and they hit a three. But now 14 seconds left on the timeout. Anderson getting ready to come out, as are the Mules. Mules will be headed to the free throw line. Mitch Whitlow see if they were able to ice him. Ice worked a little bit on Francis. Because that free throw was everything but down. Get a little bit of that home cooking in the new gym. <laughs> it feels like on this end of the court, Anderson has had a lot of shots just rim out. But here's Mitchell Whitlow looking to try and put this game further out of reach. His first shot is up and no good. Rebound by Navarez. Here comes Cooper. Cooper running through, trying to get on Francis, gets into the lane, throws it up at the buzzer, lays it up. It's no good, but they got a foul. So with point one to go, Francis whistled. And Alamo Heights has a chance to win it in everyone's least favorite way at the foul line. And Flynn Cooper with 14. This would be a brutal way to lose it. But you got to make your free throws. Point one left on the clock. Maybe they can have time to put more on. But I imagine this is it. Flynn Cooper, 14 points in the game. Mules trail by just one. So if he makes both, they win. Free throws up and good. And Anderson, other than this, has only shot, I believe two other than this final stretch, has only shot six foul shots in the game. Point one to go. Here they go. No good! We've got overtime! Let's go! Let's go! Woo! Let's go Trojans survive. It's now 15 for Flynn Cooper. Woo-wee. As we now head to OT. Trojans will take that. A chance to win the game in a few more minutes of regulation. Let's go, Blue! So Anderson felt like Alamo Heights had been surviving all game until the very end. Anderson just barely survives. They had an opportunity to hit some free throws to put the game out of reach. They were unable to. And going one for two at the line to tie it is Flynn Cooper. But we've got OT. Don't believe we had any OT last year. Whew. I would have gone home grumpy if they won on free throws. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when they did that great Elam ending in the NBA All-Star game and everyone loved it and it was the best All-Star game in recent memory and then they won on free throws and it was a total buzzkill? That would have been tonight. Can't end this game on free throws. You got to end this game legit. Let's go, Blue! So here we go. We'll have another jump. Alamo Heights won the first one as Gage Wright has a couple inches on Nate Langley here. They're going to try and get it into Chico Strash, who, by the way, four fouls. Don't believe there's any single Anderson player in foul trouble. I think they've all got like one or two. Cooper with two. The team high for Alamo Heights. And Strash with four. You've got another starter, John Marco, with uh, three fouls. So here we go. Still waiting to get started. So we've got four minutes on the screen for OT. And 
We're not sure what we're waiting on to get this thing started. Uh, officials over there talking to Coach Pittsford. Perhaps we're talking about some fouls. Not sure. Uh, both teams knocked back down into the. Looks like both teams got a team foul taken away, perhaps? Not sure if that's a rule or if we're mistaken keeping track before. Here's Langley. This is two for two on tips for Gage Wright. They get it into Cooper. Cooper looking for Wright. Instead, they'll just kick it outside. So here's Salmon. Back out for Wright. Strash trying to get open. They've got Marco. Marco working his way around. They've got Salmon over there on the right side once again. Back up to Cooper. Blackerby in defense. After picking up those two early fouls, Blackerby still just having those two. But here we go. Back outside. It's Cooper. Blackerby playing some good defense. Cooper getting to the basket. And Jack Francis just took that right away. He just took that out of his hands. I don't think that's a jump ball. I think that's a regular steal. Hey, he just took the ball. That's not a jump ball. Yeah, this dad right here by the microphone. Agree. Come on, Blue. <laughs> Sorry, let me turn that down. <laughs> All right. Here's Whitlow. Gets it into Wagner. Three and a half to go. In theory. Let's get to four or five OTs tonight. What do you say? Wagner gets it across. Stratch defending. Whitlow cutting to the basket. Lays it up. Lays it in. No foul. Not sure how there's no foul called there. But I'll just take the bucket. Trojans with a two-point lead. Stratch. Bringing the ball up now. As Mitch Whitlow continues to push his good night, he's up to 14. She could have had a couple of those, those foul shots looming pretty large right now. As here's Marco into the basket, just throws that towards something. And that's going to be out of bounds, staying here. Blackerby got him on it. Hey, what are you watching? As they've got Cooper in on the inbound. Mind your own business. Now up top, here's, here's right. And stolen away by Wagner. Strash just tossed it to the Trojan point guard. And that's got to be a foul going against Cooper. That has to be a foul against Cooper. No! Dang, man. Flynn Cooper has just been pesky and gotten every whistle tonight. Wagner got there and very clearly a hip check. Very clearly a hip check by Flynn Cooper who's going to get more free throws on the night. Just one and one. First free throw is no good, but Marco there on the board. They get it back outside to Strash. Marco spun baseline and went and go found that rebound. They did a good job of boxing out on that other side, though. As Strash loses it again! Taken away by Whitlow, and, and it looks like Wagner... Francis just going to pull this one back as Marco playing some solid defense on him. They get it back to Jack. Jack going to say slow it down. They have a two-point lead with two and a half to go. Jack pulls it back outside. Gets around Cooper. Going to pull up from the foul line. Air ball. Looked like Alamo Heights player might have gotten a hand on it. And that one's knocked out of bounds off of the hands of Cooper. Or off the hands of Blackerby. It was looking for Cooper. My mistake on that one. As now it'll be white on the inbound is... For the second time in about five minutes, nobody is home for Alamo Heights. Because there is a new cacophony happening somewhere outside to the right of us. As they get it up to the right, Strash in that left corner as Cooper has it. That counts as his dribble, right? Yep. Strash working on Black or Beep. And he's just going to fling that behind his head. No good. Rebound Wagner. With some great defense on the interior by Anderson. See, that's what they want. They want you to drive in and then collapse. That's what this defense has been so good at. So that's going to be a foul again. No, that's a timeout. I was just about to say, did Strash foul out on that? No, it's a timeout for Anderson. With a minute 45 to go, a couple more baskets, and we will be out of here. Trojans, nothing has come easy. Just 50 points for them tonight. Actually ties their high that they had against Alamo Heights last season. It was 57 to 50. The Mules won, but right now it's Anderson 50-48. to 48. So they've got a chance to, uh, to take this thing home. Feels a lot better getting on the road back to Austin with a win in the, in the column. But either way, a lot to, to be happy about and a lot to be not so happy about if you're Anderson. I know 
I have an idea of a couple of the things that they're going to be working on in practice over the next, uh, well, really just on Monday. They've got another road game on Tuesday up at Round Rock. Should be there for that one with you so you don't have to make the trip. We'll also be there for all your Anderson home games this season. Looking forward to make the, uh, the home opener. But here we go. It's Wagner on the inbound. Alamo Heights getting ready to come out of their timeout. Both teams with 18 fouls. Strash going to be defending the inbound. Getting it in to Francis. Cooper playing some pesky defense on Jack all night. Francis crosses him over. Nice little dribble move there. Gets it back outside to Wagner. Down to 90 seconds to go here in just a moment. Wagner crossing over. Back outside Whitlow. They're going to get it back to Blackerby and reset. Yeah, no, no real incentive for Anderson to, to get a bunch of shots up. So they just want to, to run it down with a lead. Get it into Whitlow. Francis is wide open in the corner, and that's a foul against Cooper. He doesn't like it, but that's what a foul is. It's not a good foul as it sends Mitch Whitlow to the free throw line, although he did miss his last one. This should be a single bonus as well, so this might act as a turnover if he can't hit the front end. Gets it to go. That's a big shot from Mitch Whitlow. I tell you, especially with, with how we saw the, the end of this game go, being up three is a, is, is a lot of points in this game. So it's now 51 to 48. It was Whitlow, two for two from the line. That's nails. Absolute nails from Mitch Whitlow. He got a four-point lead for the Trojans. Minute 20 to go. 80 seconds left in the game. Here's Strash. Francis defending Cooper in the corner. Now back up top. That's Salmon. Salmon into the corner. He's got Strash. Langley chases him off the line. They get it back outside to Navarez. His triple is good. Cuts it right back down to one as Alamo Heights has been timely with their baskets. They feels like they haven't hit very many, but every time they need one, they get one. Because that was really hard to type in 5-1. One more time, I want to thank our sponsors on the broadcast tonight, your sponsors of Trojan Basketball, Harry Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech, as well as our fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy. Shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. So here we go. Trojans with the ball with a one-point lead. They don't have to do anything with it other than get it across the mid-court line. That's a big shot for Alamo Heights. That triple by Navarez. That's just his second make of the game. Both triples. 66 seconds. Trojans need to hold on. Trojans are in the double bonus. So they'll have a chance to add two every time they head to the free throw line. Not just the one and one. So they get it into Francis, right back to Willow. That's a heads-up play by a veteran player. Jack could have easily just been trapped in the corner, but he gets it off to, to Mitchell Whitlow, who has been not money from the free throw line, but he's made his free throws. But an even better job by Alamo Heights just getting that foul in. There's still a minute three to go. Whitlow carrying tonight for Anderson as far as points are concerned. He's got 16. That one looks short out of his hands. They've got Marco coming out uh, along with Beck Tippett. And it's Strash, Cooper, Wright, Salmon, and Navarez in for Alamo Heights. That free throw is good, so they get the lead back to two. And still leading the game in points for Anderson is Mitchell Whitlow. He's got 17 with that make. Here's Strash working on Wagner, pulling back. 
Trying to get a screen. Francis switches onto him and he's killed his dribble. Here's Cooper. He gets it into right. It's knocked away. Blackerby with the steal. Not sure who initially got his hands on it. It might have been Whitlow. As here comes Wagner pushing into the front court and he's fouled by Salmon. And that'll send Mike Wagner to the line. So Mike Wagner to the line. He's got nine, looking to get into double figures here. That makes it a three-point game. And Mike, <laughs> Mike knocks that one down. I'm swallowing the announcer jinx as much as I can right now. It's Wagner. It's Wagner is uh, looking to make it a four-point game for Anderson. He does. Mike Wagner. And now I can say what I wanted to say is he looked absolutely nonplussed out there. Just that did not look like a big deal to him. His strash knocked away by Wagner. My goodness, Mike Wagner putting this game on his back to close it out. Gets it into Francis. Francis layup is good. Jack Francis puts the Trojans up six. 30 to go. Strash. That's 13 for Francis. Cooper gets open. Just going to have to fire one up. It's no good. Rebound Langley. Gets it into Wagner. And with 17 seconds to go, they get it into Langley. It's another foul going for Wagner. And I think they'd rather have him at the line than Langley. So, oh my goodness, Anderson dodging a bullet and closing out this last minute very well. We'll see if Wagner, with 14 seconds to go, is able to put this game away. They're up six. Already going to be a tough one to come back from with 14 seconds and no shot. Well, the shot clock would be off. It'd, it'd, it'd be foul time anyway. But Alamo Heights going to burn another timeout, try and maybe ice Wagner to keep them back in this game. But Trojans in the double bonus shooting two, even though it's no shot. And by the way, going back a moment ago, the refs swallowed the whistle on a pretty clear foul uh, on around half court when Wagner got it into Blackerby that ended up being a wide open lay for Jack Francis. So Anderson upset, but then it kind of turns into something more fortitudinous, if I may. Fortitudinous? Fortitudinous? I don't know. I'm, try I'm trying to bust out SAT words. It's not working. I, I'm an RTF major. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves here. But, <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll take that open layup and, and instead of, like, five more seconds on the clock forcing a guy to make two free throws, which Anderson has good players. They've got guys who can knock down free throws, but even the best free throw shooters in the world, I think... Who has the record for, like, best free throw percentage in a season? I think it's Jose Calderon, which is random. But I think even Jose Calderon would rather take an open layup than two free throws. And Jack will certainly take it, pad the stats a little bit, gives him 13, push himself ahead of Mike Wagner for second most points. Although, Wagner with a chance to tie Jack with 13 if he can hit both of these. And my player of the game for this one is... Uh, it's got to be that man right there. He misses it. The student section's going crazy, although it's probably fine if you're Anderson. You'd really like to have one of these, but um, especially because they'll have to send it back to the line, and if they hit one free throw again, then it'll be a two-possession game again. So, boom. Mike can't make both, but he does have 12 points. So, Strash, cross court. Here's Salmon. Back over to Strash. One dribble. Mike knocks it away again! Behind the back pass, over to Blackerby. Bennett going to get a layup on the other end. Trojans win the basketball game in emphatic fashion. Mike Wagner played the game of his life on defense. Just absolutely unstoppable just with these little tips and pokes. It's, oh, my goodness. I would hate to play against a guy like Mike Wagner. I can imagine that everybody in this <laughs> on the Alamo Heights bench hates Mike Wagner right now, and I think that's the best compliment you can give him and his game tonight. He finishes with 12 uh, points. Mitchell Whitlow, team high of 17. Francis right there with 13. It looks like we've got the JV game coming here. I'll get you some, uh, some shots and warm-ups for all you parents out there. But we won't be carrying the JV game, but we will have a little bit of a post-game wrap-up right here. What a game. Wow. Just what a game. Final score here. Anderson ends up pulling it out by nine with the Francis uh, with the free throw to finish it off for Wagner and then the layup by Blackerby. Anderson wins it 60 to 51 in 
overtime. It's going to be hard to top that one for game of the year for Trojans on Vipe, but they will certainly do their best. We've got some good games for you this season. That round rock game on Tuesday should be pretty entertaining. Westlake, we've got them at home this season. That's always a joy. I'm not sure if they've got the same D1 pedigree that they normally do. I remember last season we saw that four-star Kansas recruit, KJ Adams. We'll see who they've got this season, but we should have all these games where I think there's some tournaments and, and things like that that we may not be getting into. But looking at it now, Anderson will have their next game, and we will have that next game for you. It'll be Round Rock Tuesday. The 16th will be out there for you. And then the home opener will be on the 23rd, so we'll have a little bit of a layoff full week before we get back into it. But that'll be LBJ at home. And then another week we'll have Westwood. And I think we start getting maybe into some tournaments. We have that Anderson uh, Classic tournament that they host every season. But I could not be more ecstatic to be back. I had such a good time last season, and it was very – uh, it made me feel nice and warm inside to know that all y'all listeners at home wanted me to come back and do another season. And there's not much I love more than basketball. And getting paid to watch it is kind of surreal. So happy to be back. Happy to have another good season of Trojan basketball. Hopefully they can repeat some of their success that they had last season. They did something this year that they didn't do last year, and that is start 1-0 with a victory over the Alamo Heights Mules, christening this absolutely gorgeous new gym with a loss. It is stunning in here. This is one of the nicest high school gyms I have ever seen. And that makes sense where we are out here in Alamo Heights. But happy to christen it and have them go out sad. Trojans win it. 60-51 to 51 with an extra frame. Mike Wagner and Mitchell Whitlow, your players of the game on Vipe. We'll have some more Trojan basketball for you coming up on Tuesday at the Round Rock Dragons. Hope all of you that made the trip out to Alamo Heights has a safe uh, travel back. Hope you all have a great night and a great weekend, and we will be back Tuesday. Looking forward to it, y'all.